SG Wilson. And I am SG Wilson. And SG Wilson from another universe. A mirror universe. Right. Area. I've invited you, my evil counterpart from a mirror universe, I don't think you'd be offended by that, to talk about a subject near and dear to my heart, world building hacks. It's a process I like to call world tweaking. And uh, this next little bit will explain what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've written a book called Me Versus the Multiverse, Pleased to Meet Me. It's the first in a series about a boy who goes to a convention for his duplicates from parallel Earths, and he has to stop the evil version of himself from doing some nasty stuff across various dimensions. I also co-host a podcast called This Week in the Multiverse, which involves skits and stories with an alternate Earth theme. Anyway, in thinking up these alternate Earths, I realized I was using different methods that, when kind of collected together, could be a toolkit for anybody wanting to create a parallel Earth of their own. After all, these days, who doesn't want to make a different reality for themselves? All these techniques fall under the same umbrella, a process I call world tweaking. It's sort of like world building, but different. So here's my deal with world building. Totally cool idea and everything, but for me, it's a bit of work, to say the least. You, can, you know, the hardcore version, you start from the beginning with life and then figure out the continents and how they all fit together and where all the stuff goes the land masses and the weather and the geography and then all the life and how it developed and for me it's just involved all this research and uh revising and time and headache so i like world tweaking because you just take our world and tweak it as much as you want and then you got a new world okay well to explain these world building hacks i've brought in some of my counterparts um I should explain though that I have had these guys over to my house before, but it didn't go all that well. And anyway, I'm practicing social distancing, so it's safer just to do things by transdimensional Zoom. So let's get back to the guy you met earlier, my evil counterpart. Here he is with the first one, uh, give it a goatee. Well, I wish you hadn't brought up that unpleasantness from last time I visited you, but yes, let's get started. One of the easiest and most fun techniques for making an alternate world is something that I like to call Give It A Goatee. The name comes from the famous Star Trek episode where the crew of the Enterprise meets evil versions of themselves from the mirror universe, and the evil Spock happens to have a goatee. Making a character their opposite creates an instant conflict and is a great tool for character development. It's also fun to imagine a work where, say, the Joker is the good guy and Batman is the villain, as it is on my Earth. or Ares, the Greek god of war, as I understand it on your earth, well, he happens to be the god of love on my earth. Well, of course, a mirror world doesn't necessarily have to be about good and evil either. You can make other stuff the opposite too, like Fiona in Adventure Time, who's the female counterpart of Finn in a different version of Ooh, where most everyone's gender is flipped. You know, just general things are fun to put through this process too. Instead of a hair dryer, a hair wetter. Or instead of a swimming pool, maybe a sand pool. You get the idea. So why don't we practice putting a goatee on some other things? Now, on my world, Santa is, you guessed it, evil. So why don't we go through the process of turning your good Santa into the evil Santa that I grew up with? Is he still jolly, but in a creepy, scary kind of way? Any other traits that stand out? Is he smelly, maybe? Then ask yourself, what's his background? How did he become evil Santa? Who were his parents? What are his strengths as a person and what are his faults? Is his fondness for cookies more of an uncontrollable addiction? How does he see himself and how is it seen by others? What kind of sense of humor does he have? Again, wouldn't it be creepy if his ho 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 was more of an evil ho ho ho? And lastly, what are his hobbies? All right, thanks evil SG, that was really informative. Now we have another SG to talk to, post-apocalyptic SG. He's on an earth where things are going rather worse than they are here, if you can believe that. He's going to talk to us about hack number two, um, nine and three quarters in it, which he can explain what that means. Apocalyptic SG? What? <gasps> uh, sorry, I didn't mean to startle oh, you. It's you. Yeah. Well, 
Right. I remember we talked about you talking about that hack. Yeah. What are you up to anyway? I'm not bothering you? Just cooking dinner. Okay. Mm. Okay, well, take it away. Thanks. Yeah, okay. So this was called Nine and Three Quarters in it. Nine and Three Quarters, of course, refers to the platform that Harry Potter steps through in the Harry Potter books to get to the Wizarding World. Wouldn't that be nice? And I know the Wizarding World is in an alternate Earth, per se, but it's kind of close enough. So the idea of this is you slide into a uh, different reality. You know, you can start small, take an object, like um, in Harry Potter, for instance, instead of soccer or football, they have Quidditch. Instead of the British Parliament, there's the Ministry of Magic. Uh, instead of a phone, there's owl delivery. The list goes on. As a writing exercise, why don't you think of an object or, you know, figure out what it's equivalent would be in one of these different settings. For instance, you could take a car, the average minivan. On a futuristic Earth, it might be a hover minivan with like a sassy robot driver. Uh, on a magical Earth, it could be a double-wide flying carpet with cup holders. Uh, on a post-apocalyptic Earth, maybe somebody's fixed it up to be a flame-spouting, spike-covered monstrosity like um, Ned down the street. <laughs> Just think of that sort of thing. What kind of funny, bizarre take could you think of of these different um, objects? You know, it's fun to start small and then work your way up. And, and then you kind of go further. You think about what kind of story you can build around them. Like, what would the United States be like in a post-apocalyptic Earth? I can go on and on about that. Or uh, what would it be like in a magical Earth? I mean, would it still be the United States? Would it be different? What would Justin Bieber be doing in a steampunk Earth, for instance? Um, you do this enough times with enough people, places, and things, and you'll eventually come up with some ideas that you really like. So, uh, now, back to my meal. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, post-apocalyptic SG. I hope things get better over there. Um, the next SG up is a much happier guy. He is a um, mixed match SG, and he's going to talk to us about hack number three, catch that cat gator. Hey. Hey, mixed match. How are you doing? How's it going? Great. Cool. Okay. Yeah. You ready to talk about hack number three? All right. Yeah. Okay, so another world hacking technique or world tweaking technique is to take sort of this mix and match approach. You know what I mean? Like you mix styles and you mix up names. Just see what happens, see what you come up with. So for instance, it's kind of like mad living, you know? For instance, you take the white house and you put in another adjective, like uh, the pink house or something. And, and then from then you think like, what earth would have a pink house or something, you know, as their seat of, government or the executive branch, at least. Or, like, you could change it up even more. You could say the fight house, for instance. You know, what happens at the fight house? Are people fighting each other to settle legislation and old scores? So, you know, the idea is just to see what you can kind of come up with by playing around with words. And when you apply this to people, like historical figures, for instance, uh, you can come up with some interesting things because some of them already come with their own adjectives. Like you say, Alexander the Great could become Alexander the So-So. And then, you know, titles too, like just throw something in front of a celebrity like Emperor Taylor Swift or Pope Justin Bieber. You know, just play around with it. And then you come up with these things and then you kind of build a world from there. Uh, another thing you can do is to mix and match even more randomly you know, to create like hybrids, um, something that won't, doesn't exist in our earth, but it's a combination of two things that do, and they, they become something new, like a parakeet squid, or a woolly dodo, or a vulture puppy. You can do the same with people and places. Just mash them together and see what tickles your imagination. For instance, caveman Abraham Lincoln, or the Taj Mahal White House. You know, just have fun with it, roll with it, and like I say, when you think about like a world that had a caveman, Abraham Lincoln, or a Taj Mahal White House, just a world may start to develop around there. You never know.
Thanks, Mix Match. That was uh, really fun. And um, there's another SG we were going to talk to, Smug SG. We had a bad connection and no big loss because he's pretty smug and hard to talk to, quite honestly. I mean, you know how it goes with your counterparts, I'm sure. Um, he was going to talk to us about the last hack, uh, Rescue Rome, which involves basically taking a historical event, like, say, the fall of the Roman Empire, and change it, like maybe Rome won. You could do big history, like Rome or... American Revolution, you can do small history, like maybe a world where nobody invented corn dogs, for instance. So, and you just play it out, see how it goes. So, but let's re recap the other ones. Hello, I'm back. SG has been indisposed due to technical difficulties, so I will pick up where he left off. I'm fully capable of that. Uh, we are going to just do a simple recap of what we've learned. First, we learned about hack number one, my favorite. The one you really only need to worry about. Give it a goatee. What more could you want out of an alternate Earth? You know, make it the opposite. Not necessarily evil, but evil is most fun, like evil Gandhi. How could you go wrong with that? Next, we have hack two, nine and three quarters it. Uh, we take our reality and shift it to a different genre, if you will, or, or type, you know, our world and elements of it into a science fiction setting or a fantasy setting or some other setting of your choice. For instance, take your entire neighborhood and make them all cyborgs. What could be more fun than that? Next, hack number three, catch that cat gator. We mix and match. We make lists and swap out names for other names and just see what happens. And finally, rescue Rome. We change some bit of history, big or small, and see how it plays out in a different alternate world. So I hope these hacks help with your writing or just for grins. You can um, always go to sgwilson.net to find worksheets that may help you uh, play some of these ideas out a little bit. And um, I guess that's about it. Happy writing. And if you're so inclined, feel free to pick up a copy of Me vs. the Multiverse. Thanks so much.